Alors bonjour à toutes et à tous. Comme vous n'êtes pas très nombreux, on va faire quelque chose de très interactif, on va faire un peu salon. C'est en anglais. Alors, c'est en anglais, on va demander parce qu'il y en a qui parlent. Premièrement, est-ce que tout le monde est francophone ou est-ce que vous voulez qu'on passe en anglais Do you want to switch to English Français 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 Alors on va, on va rester en français pour l'instant, si quelqu'un d'autre vient, on passera en anglais. Euh, si... Donc en fait, comme on n'est pas nombreux, euh, on, va, on va le faire en interactif un petit peu, hein, si ça vous convient. Euh, quelle est votre connaissance des programmes européens de recherche euh, sur la recherche pour la sécurité Avez-vous déjà été confronté ou êtes-vous... Non Non, personne Bonjour, j'en prie, hein, soyez le bienvenu. Vous parlez français No Then we switch to English. Is that okay Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> okay. Do you know the, um, the, the European program for uh, security, the, for res research and uh, security research, Rise in Europe? Are you familiar with it? Yes, you are. Wonderful. You are from wh which organism? Innov. Yeah, great. I'm a great friend of um, John Rodriguez. Yeah, great. He's a friend of mine. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, okay, and you, do you know well the Horizon Europe program? Yeah, you know? Wh which, which company are you from? Police du Brésil. Oh. Nice to meet you. <laughs> okay, for those who don't know, and for those who know, uh, we here to represent uh, the we represent the French government, the the company, the, the 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 Ministry of Higher Education and Research, and we are here to give you an idea of what is the, the European uh, program for the European program for research in security, which is called one part of Horizon Europe. And first we present ourselves, I'm Jean Canet, I'm the French national delegate at the program committee. If you don't know the program, it doesn't ring a bell to you, it's perfectly normal. And I'm here with my colleague Frédéric Perland, who is uh, on, the, uh, on the bottom left of the, of, of the slide, uh, and who is one of the national contact points. National contact points are the people in charge of uh, accompanying the community and the people who want to Uh, set up proposals uh, for the program. Okay, Horizon Europe is one of the large policies of Europe, of the European Commission. Uh, it's uh, one of the major policies, so it's the policy of research. We're talking here about research and innovation. And uh, as you can see, there's a budget in seven years of almost 100 billion euros. And it's spread across uh, several what we call pillars. Uh, and these pillars represent each um, um, level of maturity of the technologies you want to develop. So we're here, here to present to you the security program, which is hidden in the second pillar. So the first pillar is science, pure science. The third pillar is uh, innovation and uh, companies and uh, innovation and support to SMEs, for instance. And the pillar in the middle is what we could call applied science. And there's another pillar which is more policy oriented. So there's something that is very fundamental with a research program. That is, it is science, and it's also science for policy, for European policy, for European society. It is important because if you are to become a candidate of the, if you are to become a candidate of the of the program, you have to know that uh, you you do not exactly set up a proposal uh, to answer to to propose a technology. You set up a proposal to uh, address uh, societal issues and political issues. All these societal and political issues are perfectly uh, described in uh, documents from the program. So if we just take a minute on this second pillar, uh, this is what we call top-down. It means that the program Uh, the, the, the work program is elaborated, namely by the Commission, 
with the support of member states. This is what I do. I'm a national delegate, so I represent France in France and the Commission uh, to elaborate the, the best and the best suitable program possible. So, as I said, the project calls are centered on societal problematics and global challenges. This is, uh, uh, of course, in security, it's a particular context because in security, we're talking about civil security, I haven't said it, but this is a civil security. There is another program that is a military program where we don't address that here today. This is security. This is... Um, um, civil security. So you have uh, certain impacts and political uh, and, and political uh, agenda that is well defined in advance, and is suitable as well for the the, the grand um, societal challenges uh, for Europe, which is climate, democracy, citizen, security of the citizen, and and others. And, uh, and uh, also for the member states, member states and associate, my, uh, and associate. If you don't know what it is, I'll explain just a little bit later. These are collaborative projects. We'll explain just in a second what it exactly means, but you have to be uh, uh, in a consortium with other people. So these are collaborative projects and the duration of the project is two to three or five years on average for each time um, a budget that could be, yeah, average two, three, four, five million, but it go, it can go up to 30 million if it's a really, really large project. You have, uh, you have uh, what we call eligibility criteria, but it's uh, what you have to know is that you must set up your proposals in a consortium with several other partners. And uh, the minimum rule is that you are at least three partners, three different partners from at least three different member states or associated. So member states are the member states of the European Union, uh, 27 member states, and all what we call the associated nations, they are uh, countries that have contracted with the European Commission to be included in the program. So they pay their share and they enter the club. It's as simple as that. There are a lot of them, as you can see, a lot of countries that are part of it. And uh, as soon as a country has joined as an associate uh, the, the program, it can totally, uh, all the people from this country can participate and enter the program uh, as any m member state uh, uh, participant. And there are other rules, but uh, I, I can let that aside for the moment. Okay. So you can see the list of associated nations. Some of them are still under associations. They are not completely signed yet, but it's the, the, the list is pretty okay. And be careful because Switzerland is not part of them. Okay, uh, so you set up a proposal. If you have an idea, you have a work program. The work program is a, is a, is a text with a, a lot of pages, and you have topics, and you have a deadline, as you can imagine, and you have to answer to that deadline, answer to certain, uh, propose a, a complete solution to a problem that has been stated by written. And then you're evaluated after that. Evaluated over three, um, over three criteria excellence, impact, and quality and efficiency of implementation. We are not going to detail that now, but keep in mind, excellence is how you are, uh, is, uh, yeah, and, uh, and open science, yes. Excellence is uh, what is the, the level of, uh, the quality level of your proposal and how you qualify as an expert. Impact is what your your project will do and what achievement it will have, and uh, quality and efficiency is how uh, how you're going to implement that. Okay, uh, a proposal uh, makes 45 pages, and uh, you have uh, plenty of opportunities 
over if you want to get involved you have plenty of opportunities either go to your ncps for some counseling do you have ncps in every country or uh, participate to uh, large meetings that are organized by the by the commission or the ncps uh, to meet other people it's very important if you want to enter the program that you meet other people who do this like you or can take your hand and and get you inside uh, at the beginning okay not going to detail that but uh, please know that uh, what I said about the uh, the the, uh, the, the, the the societal objectives and the political objectives everything is pretty much formalized and codified into documents and you have to know them if you want to enter the program and that's what is imp that's what important uh, they are um, codified and formalized for the entire Horizon Europe program and then it gets down to the thematic programs like security. Okay. There are three types of collaborative projects. Not very important now, but uh, please know that there is a distinction between the projects that are very pretty much innovation oriented, research oriented, uh, the one that uh, the, the projects that are, uh, I would say, research m more on the research side, and other that are more on the innovation side, which means a little closer to the application. And of course, when the when the commission does need to. Uh, have a little more uh, knowledge and proficiency about what they're going to do next. They issue a special uh, type of uh, project, we, which we call the CSAs, uh, where people uh, gather, the people who, who are reading the, the proposal, they gather and they uh, issue some counseling uh, to the commission, counseling work. Just a reminder, the technology readiness level you probably all know about that. And I'm going to go quick on this, but just to give you a glimpse of how it works globally. Uh, one program is seven years. It follows the same pace as the, 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 the great milestones of uh, the, the European uh, span life because the, the, the budgets and all the, the, the there's, it's a long cycle, which is a cycle of seven year periods. So Horizon Europe is exactly the same. The research program is the same. It is the, uh, it's the, the, the ninth, ninth program that is like this. Uh, so it's a seven years program and then you have what we call a strategic planification which is exactly what I said about the, uh, the, the policy objectives that are being formalized. Uh, this is done for four years, for a period of four years and then another of three years. And you have a work program by slices of two years or three uh, for each, uh, for each uh, cluster which is all the thematic area. Uh, and then, every, so then at the end you have your um, reference documents, and you have all these policy documents. The policy one, which is strategic planification, and the technical, would say ones, uh, which is exactly what you're supposed to answer to, which is defined here. Uh, public documents that is easy to find, but again, you can also ask for help. Uh, for the, uh, to, to the NCPs that are present here or uh, at your national level. Okay, uh, I, I'm going to give the floor to my colleague who will give you now uh, a better idea of what kind of, uh, of what we do exactly kind of things. Okay. Yes, thank you, Joe. Uh, yes, we, you have seen uh, the general picture and uh, the global structure of the program over the f seven years with the different pillars and the different thematics. So on the security, civil security thematic, we follow the same uh, structure, of course, and uh, uh, the, the, the main overall goal of this uh, program on the security is structured through the 
uh, strategic plan. So what is the strategic approach, approach for security for, from, uh, for the European Commission? Uh, it's basically to, to try to move on uh, more uh, being reactive than, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, not, not being more proactive than what we used to be uh, in the past, which was really uh, reactive. We try to anticipate as much as possible. So you will see that in this program for the, the 2022 and probably for the coming years, there will be a focus on foresight, prevention, anticipation to, to try to, to, uh, to prepare yourself better and to prepare your Europe better to the coming uh, expected or unexpected uh, threats uh, in terms of security. So, um, as uh, Jérôme mentioned, uh, uh, all this is structured through what we call the, the strategic plan over the four years, huh? uh, and it will be updated uh, uh, later on. But uh, uh, and during in the strategic plan, you have uh, it's a document which is not very big, but uh, it's very interesting because it shows the the, the way the the, um, uh, the Commission uh, structure its uh, research and innovation uh, uh, program uh, strategically. Uh, it's uh, 30 pages, and they it structures through what they call the key strategic orientation. And we have key strategic orientation for security, uh, in particular two of them, uh, uh, that uh, the key SO A and key SO D. Uh, there are not so many key strategic uh, orientation in the program, by the way, but the two are, are related to security. And uh, uh, as you can see, uh, uh, it is focused on what are the orientation that will give and what are the impacts uh, that are um, uh, expected by the, by the Commission uh, by structuring this program and proposing pro uh, uh, topics uh, for which they expect proposal to be able to, to deliver this impact. So um, competitive and secure data economy, so we are, as Giro mentioned, the, the, the main uh, policy of Europe are, are linked to digital, but green, digital, uh, and uh, uh, democracy, uh, if I had to summarize it in three words. So security orientation are also related to that. So uh, to be competitive and, and, and have a secure data economy, uh, or I, I could say also a, a cyber economy, because it's, uh, we are talking about cyber security, so uh, secure and cyber uh, secure digital technology. Um, the second aspect is uh, uh, we want a, a European society much more resilient so everything that uh, is, uh, as we mentioned before, about uh, preparedness, uh, anticipation, and being able to, to, uh, to be ready for anything, even unknown, uh, unexpected uh, threats, is, is, a, is a must in the program. So uh, resident EU prepared for emerging, emerging threats. So there are a few that we know, and some we may not know. Um, but we want also to, to secure the society while uh, keeping the... European uh, society values such as uh, uh, openness and democracy, uh, which sometimes is uh, difficult to handle, but it's a real challenge that uh, is worth uh, tackling. That's why we, are, we have research and innovation, because we, it's not basic uh, security where you, you close everything and you, 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 you make sure that people follow the rules. You have to take into account the openness, democracy, and I will see uh, uh, privacy, it's also very important. So these are the, the key, I would say, uh, uh, strategic orientation that uh, uh, you have to remember when you are answering any topic which may be much more specific, and we will see uh, much more specific. So to recall a little bit, there are a few priorities for Europe uh, which are linked to, uh, to the EU policy. Huh? Um, and uh, and uh, one thing that this program is trying to achieve also is to to deliver capabilities to the, the people that are dealing with security, uh, going from the government up, down or up, I don't know how to say it, to the uh, society itself and the citizen. So you will see that in the call, there are uh, 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 expected uh, uh, projects uh, dealing with uh, many different stakeholders of the security uh, uh, problem. Um, as I mentioned, we are in Europe, so uh, there is a specific emphasize on uh, ethical and, and, uh, and privacy aspect uh, because we want to make sure that uh, security solutions that will be proposed by this, by this program 
will be supported by the society. So uh, it is important to take this into account. And uh, uh, overall, uh, if Europe invests one, 100 billion euro over seven years, it's also to, to make sure that there is a, a competitive European uh, security industry at the end, because this is supporting uh, the whole uh, uh, security sector. It's true for the other thematics also, but in security, uh, it supports the industry, it supports the SMEs, it supports the uh, universities and, and research labs, and uh, uh, all the associations that are, are dealing with security and to make sure that they are competitive and that they can uh, propose a solution throughout uh, uh, the world. So I won't come back on the strategic orientation. So how the program is structured? The, pro the program is structured, and this is true for the next seven years, uh, um, the next six years, because the program started in 2021. In structure is in what is called destination. So uh, these are, are big thematics that uh, are going to be addressed through every year through a, a program with different topic on each of these destination, with different budget. But as you can see here, uh, so the, the, you have uh, six destinations. Some are, are much bigger, like uh, number four, the increased cyber security. We understand why. So a lot of budget is devoted to this thematic and this destination, what we call destination. So if I go through them rapidly, you have one, one which is again uh, fighting against uh, crime and terrorism. Uh, which is, uh, uh, I would say, a quite recurrent and stable uh, topic uh, since now uh, quite a few years. Uh, uh, we understand why. Uh, second topic, uh, which also is important, even if you will see there, there is not so many uh, uh, topics because this is clear. So uh, dealing with border, uh, you don't have many, many different ways to do it. So you, there is a just a few uh, topics that are addressing that, but they represent 14% uh, of the budget. Resilient infrastructure, there have been, here you see only 6% devoted to, to topics in research and innovation on this topic, on this uh, thematic destination, resilient infrastructure. This is due to the fact that there were quite a lot, because as you know, and, and Jero uh, uh, may have mentioned it, uh, this program, Horizon Europe, is a follow-up of what was called before Horizon 2020. Uh, so this framework program is the ninth of the European Commission. So it means each program is seven years. It started almost uh, 50, 50 years ago. Okay. So there were FP1, what, the, what, called, was, what was called the framework program one, two, three, four, five, and they changed name. They became uh, uh, Horizon 2020 to show that it's. Uh, and now it's Horizon Europe. So this Horizon Europe uh, is, is uh, inheriting from what has been done and all the budget that were put on the table and uh, in project in the past, especially on Horizon 2020. And there were quite a few, uh, a, a large budget put on resilient in infrastructure. That's why you will see that there is only two topics here, but they are much more focused to try to innovate and, and do research for to help to have much more resilient infrastructure, and we'll see the, 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 um, the, the reason why. Increased cybersecurity, I mentioned it, a big, uh, a big topic, and it will be probably bigger and bigger because we, we live both now in the physical and, and cyber world, so we have to be protected and safe everywhere with probably interrelation between the, the two and cascading effect and many, uh, many aspects to take into account. And uh, uh, one topic which still uh, is big, and I think uh, uh, what is a, a pity is that this was uh, existing since uh, 20 or 30 years. Where there were a lot of research and innovation and studies about disaster resilient society for Europe. But this, uh, we probably need to, to communicate much more about that because it, it, went, it didn't go too much to the politician and the governments to, to a point where we could uh, uh, think that we are at the, at the stage. So there is a lot of money still to put on, on it to make sure that we have a disaster resilient society. And there is a sixth uh, topic, which is uh, basically a, uh, a new one, uh, because it was not existing in H, uh, Horizon 2020. H2020, sorry. Um, it's, uh, we understood that, uh, as I said, a lot of work was, were done in these different thematics, and dif different destinations, a lot of budget in, in the previous program and so on. But uh, the security domain, and uh, if you go around, you will see that, is very uh, uh, cut in pieces. It's uh, distributed. Uh, uh, it's very difficult to, to get to a, a market. It's very difficult to, to benefit from all this research and innovation to push it 
towards product, towards market. So there is a specific uh, destination that uh, uh, is structured along uh, um, um, topics related to how to get to the market, how to better procure uh, a solution, how to make sure that all this research and innovation, all this money that is being invested year over year is better used to really uh, make sure that we have capabilities and, and we have a safer uh, Europe. So this is the last thematic. Just uh, uh, an information. So these call, um, uh, uh, Jérôme mentioned, that are on this uh, collaborative project for Pillar 2, are um, there is a call every year. So you have uh, all these thematics. On all these thematics, you have several topics that are uh, uh, proposed uh, as a uh, as thematics to answer for this very uh, very year, and and in 2022, the the deadlines for the calls are the 16th and the 23rd of November. So uh, just to to tell you, uh, as as uh, as Jero mentioned, basically we have a few months now uh, left to organize uh, teams and uh, and uh, consortia with different partners from different countries to to get uh, together to propose a solution uh, uh, and to answer to, uh, to different topics. And as you can see, here you have a, a, a summary of all the, the topics and the domains addressed through each destination. Uh, sorry, I will wait. I will wait. I will wait. I will Please ensure that you wear your pass and carry identification at all times. Okay. So I have not it. I do not have it, but it's okay. Uh, I go on. Uh, so you see each destination here uh, with the, the last one I was mentioning, the, the transverse one, which is uh, uh, called a, uh, SSRI. Uh, and uh, uh, for each one, you have the, an idea of the domain that are being uh, being uh, proposed uh, in red boxes. Uh, these are the ones that are uh, in the 2022 program. All these thematics are in the uh, program by itself, but according to the various uh, uh, topic each year, you may not have all the topic uh, 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 that are part of the program. So this is a kind of, of uh, cycle. And uh, here, all these thematics are, are, are valid for two years, but in 2021, you had some others that you see that are not in, in red. And in 2022, you have the one in, in red uh, boxes. So um, I won't say too much, according, or I can, I can go on through, through it if you want. Uh, yes, I think it's useful anyway. So uh, fighting crime and terrorism, uh, it starts with uh, information analysis. So to fight crime, and, and you have to see what is going on. You have to understand. So you have to analyze, and you have to do intelligence, and, and analyze a lot of information available. So there is a specific domain where, which is focusing on information analysis. Uh, and uh, uh, not only uh, uh, you have to prevent and by analyzing the data, but you may have also to analyze the data once uh, there were a crime or whatever going on, uh, 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 a security issue, you have to be able to capture all the evidence to make sure that you collect properly everything so that you can uh, go to jail, uh, to, to, uh, to justice, to, uh, to, uh, to make sure that you have all the elements, and this is also about data analysis. So a lot of focus on data analysis. Third topic about uh, fighting against, uh, directly against uh, terrorism, including in public space. And here we have a specificity, uh, I would say, in Europe. We want to, to be able to fight against crime and terrorism. We want to be able to identify uh, and to uh, react beforehand. But we want, we want to do it uh, preserving liberty and, and, uh, and uh, the, the privacy of people. So we cannot uh, recognize everybody, have a, all the world, uh, all European uh, uh, citizen in, in a database and, and make sure that you recognize everybody on the public, public space. So you have challenges with public space. You want to make them secure. And we have, for instance, a big, a big challenges with the uh, Olympic Games where you want to have... Uh, a lot of people in, in public places, but you want to guarantee security. So these are a uh, strong topic to, to address in terms of uh, technology, but also in terms of organization and the way you handle the data. 
Um, okay, uh, so uh, the last point, because it's the same for, for uh, organized crime, prevented and combated, so it's a way to now how do you, what do you use to prevent uh, and to combat uh, this kind of, uh, of uh, organized crime. But uh, the last one is interesting. Uh, it will be probably in 2023. It was about citizen. Uh, how you pro uh, you you pro protect citizen from uh, cybercrime, and this is a, a topic that we will see is also addressed in the uh, destination increased cybersecurity. Border management. As I mentioned, there were quite a lot of budget uh, devoted to this. Now a little bit less, but. Uh, the idea is always the same, is to have a, 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 an efficient surveillance of uh, various border. Here it is focusing on maritime, but uh, uh, the program itself over two years and over the seven years is dealing with any kind of, of border, so it can be land on air borders. Um, uh, and uh, of course, what we are focusing on is external borders. So all the external borders from, from Europe um, are, uh, are targeted here yeah, to, to secure uh, them, but while at the same time facilitating. So um, you know that we are in, into the Schengen uh, area, so we, we have also to make sure that uh, uh, the, the border is, uh, is open in a, in a certain way, or the experience you get to go through the border is not completely uh, uh, a, 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 a big mess and, and a problem so that people are not uh, uh, crossing the border anymore. So it's, it's a challenge and that's why there is a specific uh, research and innovation topic on, on this uh, uh, facilitating while securing the crossing of external border. This applies to people but also it applies to supply chain and so uh, better custom and uh, supply chain security is also a topic and a lot has to be done, be it in terms of detection, in terms of uh, information system, in terms of uh, the way you handle the supply chain through the different means uh, and different, uh, be it uh, maritime uh, means, uh, uh, air, air, uh, air supply chain or uh, land supply chain. And there is uh, uh, two topics which are uh, in interesting because they are open topic where you can, uh, it's a little bit more disruptive, uh, you can propose there is not specific uh, 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 thematic or, or domain to address, except that on this topic you have to know a little bit the legacy and what has been already funded in the past, so that you can propose innovative uh, solutions uh, that were not addressed in the past program and in the past year. So it's called open topic, uh, but it's uh, with a, a limitation, which is make sure that you are not re-proposing uh, again something that was uh, 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 proposed in the past years, uh, be it uh, about maritime uh, border surveillance, be it about land, uh, land uh, supply chain security. It has to be new, and, uh, but it is open. So this is interesting. It's a little bit more upstream uh, in terms of topic. Last, uh, third uh, destination, uh, what we call the resilient infrastructure. So here, as I said, a lot has been done uh, in the past. Here, what we are talking about is a large-scale uh, description of European infrastructure. So the infrastructure are interconnected, and uh, uh, a lot of effort were done in the past to secure infrastructure individually, I would say. Now we know that uh, to, we have to secure a network of infrastructure that are interlinked. So the topic is, is uh, focusing on how to uh, secure and that how to, to make sure that you have a resiliency of the infrastructure when you have a, an interconnected uh, and uh, distributed uh, large-scale infrastructure, be it uh, about energy, be it about uh, you name it. So uh, a, f a specific focus on that. And there is a, a, a topic uh, which is emerging and for which you have also uh, uh, in the program uh, opportunities to, to propose solution is about uh, secure smart cities. So uh, uh, here you, there is, a, by the way, a, a, a nice topic which is trying to, to investigate the um, technology related to biomimetism or, or natural-based uh, science to try to understand how nature and ecology and, and natural system are behaving and are resilient to different threats 
because nature is interconnected. So uh, this domain, this science, about uh, which is related to biomimetism, uh, is proposed as a, as a, a topic to, to study specifically to understand uh, complex, like smart cities, complex systems uh, based on uh, what we know about uh, the way the nature is working. Um, fourth destination. Uh, I will go uh, quite uh, fast. Here, it's uh, basically it's increased cyber security. So basically, we try to address. Uh, all the, the, the topics right, related to cybersecurity uh, to make sure that uh, the infrastructure uh, are resilient not only physically but uh, in terms of uh, interconnection, uh, uh, which are physical also, but uh, in terms of their, their cyber uh, representation, I would say. And there is probably a, a cascading effect and, and interconnection between the two, and physical and, and, and cyber. Uh, there is a need to guarantee that uh, uh, you have uh, uh, all the system we are developing, be it, uh, being, uh, be it hardware, software, or the way we supply, we supply uh, uh, equipment uh, are secured and in terms of, of uh, cyber security uh, by design. So this is a, there is a topic about security by design. Um, and uh, uh, there is also a topic which is uh, about uh, disruptive technology. So in, in this domain, you have some uh, topics that are uh, trying to be a little bit upstream to think ahead of what will be the big next challenges in terms of cyber security, um, but also uh, to guarantee that you look at cyber security on all its, as its aspects. So be it cyber security of IoT, be it cyber, cyber security of large systems, as we mentioned, the, the interconnected systems. And uh, there is also a dimension related to uh, certification of what you are dealing with. Uh, if you buy a system and uh, you don't know how it is built, it's a black box, and uh, uh, you, it's very difficult to guarantee uh, security of uh, uh, the full equipment or the full system. So certification and insurance is also part of the of the topic to deal with. And uh, last but not least, uh, uh, all this is a complex system where you have an interaction between machine and, and human beings. So uh, human-centric security, privacy, and ethics are also has also to be, to be taken into account when you, you, uh, you are trying to uh, cyber secure uh, your system and your equipment. Um, disaster resilient uh, society. Uh, here we are uh, again uh, uh, on the on the standard cycle, which is about uh, to be aware and to understand what are the risks, so that you can better prepare to better manage uh, the uh, 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 disaster when it happens. And uh, there is uh, uh, things about governance and how you organize yourself because a way to better manage is also a lot about the way you organize yourself and who is in charge of what. And uh, uh, of course, to handle disaster, we have uh, first responders uh, uh, that are at the forefront and uh, they need to, to have the best capacity and the best uh, equipment, uh, methodology and uh, approach to handle the crisis, also to deal with the uh, citizens. So this is more classical, but it's something strong, and uh, you, you will have topics uh, related to all that. The last destination, very strongly, very rapidly, uh, it's about uh, foresight. So basically, to uh, the, dom the stronger pillars of security research and innovation um, it's, it's, uh, uh, you will have topics that are trying to uh, uh, propose foresight studies on what will be the big next challenge in terms of security so that to prepare better the future program of research and innovation. Um, there is something which is uh, not, not only to, to anticipate but also how to translate it into market. So once you have uh, an innovation that has been developed in this program or you have an innovation somewhere, how do you make sure that you increase this, you know, the uptake of this innovation? So there is a, a program that uh, will, ant will anticipate and, uh, and uh, uh, propose all the uh, procurement agency to get together, to group together into a program to pre 
uh, procure innovation a little bit earlier. So there are mechanisms that uh, are, have to be invented or to be uh, proposed and, and demonstrated uh, in this program uh, to make sure that we can go from innovation, low tier, uh, up to uh, market and, and to, uh, to a commercial uh, business. Um, Cross-cutting knowledge and value for common security solution. Yes, uh, all this, uh, uh, we realize also, as I said, that, uh, uh, and you see it also with this slide, uh, we have different destination. The program is structured by kind of silos, but the, the problem of security sometimes is the same uh, entities that have to deal with uh, uh, many of these aspects. So it, it, there is an uh, opportunity through this uh, program also to uh, get together a network of experts that will share their knowledge to have a better uh, best practice on different domains and to have a cross-cutting uh, knowledge on different topics that may uh, bring uh, innovation and better handling of, uh, of security problem. So just, I won't go through, but you will see, uh, and I think you will have access to the slide from somehow, I, I think it's part of the, of, the, of the event. You will see the list of the program that uh, are for each destination I, uh, I went through. Um, I won't describe it. As I mentioned, there were two on the res resilient infrastructure. Uh, one which is interesting, the second one about autonomous system used for infrastructure protection. We realize that some of the infrastructure may be uh, diffi difficult to access, may be, diff may be uh, in a state which is not, uh, 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 which is degraded. So you cannot use all your capacity. So having autonomous capability for the infrastructure is something interesting. So here we are more, more touching about robotics and, and autonomous system. So there are, as you see, it's a big variety of, of, uh, of technology and topics that are addressed through this program. Uh, as we said, uh, here I go through it. Uh, as we said, there, there is a, a quite a budget uh, every year, so a call every year on different thematic. Uh, what we have done here was very fast to, to go through it and uh, hopefully we have more uh, to show you if, if you are interested. Um, we have done in French, uh, for those that are speaking French, uh, we have uh, done webinars to, to de detail uh, uh, each of the uh, topics, you, the, you have seen the list before, and, uh, and to go through uh, the program by itself so that uh, you can dig into it. Uh, so uh, uh, you have access to it through the, the, the website of the uh, Ministry of Defense, of uh, uh, Research, uh, Enseign uh, Enseignement and, uh, and, uh, and research. Uh, <laughs> yeah, higher education and research, sorry. Ministry of Higher Education of Re and Research. Um, and the, the website you see here. And just to, we are here to help you. So if you have uh, questions uh, as a PCN uh, national uh, uh, contact point, we are here to, to support the the contribution of the, especially the French entities, be it uh, laboratories, uh, be it uh, SMEs, uh, RTOs, uh, and uh, industry to help them to get together eventually with other uh, partners from other countries to form consortia to answer this to this call and to win and to have a, a useful project with a good impact. So we are here for that. So I propose that we stop here. If you have questions, was it clear? I see. <laughs>